Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of matrices. And we are starting off with our former series of doing the questions on 11th and 12th standard as well as JWT mains. So today's question, if I talk about from this topic of matrices, the question tells us that we have to use elementary row transformations to find the inverse of a matrix which is given to us and that matrix A is given to us as 8, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1 and 1, 2. So we will understand how to find the inverse of a matrix by using elementary row transformation and then we have been asked to find the values of x, y and z for these equations which are given to us. So there are three linear equations given the one linear equation is 8x plus 4y plus 3z is equal to 19. Second equation given to us is 2x plus y plus z is equal to 5. x plus 2y plus 2z. So these are the three linear equations given to us. We need to find the values of x, y, and z that satisfy these three linear equations. Now let's use this elementary row transformation and let's first find the inverse of this matrix A. So we know by the identity rule of the matrix that A inverse, in A into A inverse is equal to I, but I is your identity matrix. So A we already know, that is given to us as A, 2, 3, 2, 1, 1, and 1, 2. This into A inverse is equal to I, and I is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, whenever you want to use elementary row transformations to find the matrix or inverse of the matrix A, what you need to do is you just need to convert this entire matrix A into identity matrix. So we should have all the elements of A turning out to become same as the identity matrix. And whatever changes happens in this identity matrix will be directly into the inverse of the matrix A. Let's find out. So there is a trick to do this type of questions. So what you do here is always, whenever you are using row transformations, what you do is just make the first element as one and then make this two as zero. Then again, make this in the second row as one, second element of the second row as one. Then again, make this two as zero. Then you again make this one, this element as one, which is your last element of the matrix and then make this to zero. So we'll just use that idea to find the inverse of the matrix. So first of all, I want to make this eight as one here. So if I make it as one, how can I make it? I can just use that R3 if I change it with R1. So if I'm just changing R3 and R1 in the two rows, my matrix A becomes one, two, two now, two, one, one, and eight, four, three. So instead of 8, 4, 3, we are replacing it with 1, 2, 3. So 1, uh, here also if I do that same thing, R3 has to be replaced with R1. So R0, 0, 0, 1, and here it is 1, 0, 0. It is 1, 5, 3, as it is. Now what I understand from this is, I have made my first element as 1. Once I made my first element as 1, then I will try to make this and this element as 0. So to make these two elements as zero, I can use some row transformations. So I am using R2, that is second row. If I want to make that zero with respect to this one, I can write that as R2 minus two. Because if you see R2 is two, so two minus two will make it zero. And if I want to change R3 also, the row R3, I can write that as R3, so that is 8 and to make it 0 I have minus 8 here so minus 8 in R1 R1 is 1 so I get this my first column becomes 1 0 0 so 
So let's do that entire operations. First row does not change because we are not changing anything. Center so means same. Second row, if I apply R2 minus 2 R1 in second. So here if I apply R2 minus 2 R1, so 1 minus 2 into 2 that is 2. So 1 minus 2 that is minus 3. This is also same, so this also is minus 3. Third row, I know it is third row minus 8 times the first row's element. So third row is 4 minus 8 into 2 that is 16. So 4 minus 16 that is minus 12. And here you get 3 minus 8 into 2, so 3 minus 16 minus 3. Now here if I apply that same idea, first row still remains same, same, zero, 1. Second row, 0 minus, 0 into anything is always 0. Here also 0 into anything is always 0. So because these two elements are 0, these two elements would become of the second and third row same. So it will remain same as it is. Only this element is going to change. So 0 minus 2 into 1. So 0 minus 2 is minus 2. And 0 minus 8, that is again minus 2. So I get this. Now once I get this turned out 1, 0, 0, the second idea if I apply that here, I want to make this element that is the central element again 1. So to make this 1, I can use the operation that R2 changes to R2 into minus 1 by 3. So I am dividing that by minus 3. So all the elements of row 2 gets divided by minus 3. First and third row I will write it as it is. Second row, if I am multiplying or if I am dividing by minus 3, that makes it 1 at 1. So this 2 becomes 1 into A inverse. Again, if I apply that here also, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 8. And here you get 0, minus 1 by 3. And so these are your elements. Now, if I try to make the other elements of the second column also 0, so we are now trying to make this and this element 0. So to make them 0, you are going to make those 0 with respect to R2. Because you have made R2 as 1. So R1, I can write that as R1 changes to R1 minus 2. So that will make it 0, 2 minus 2, 0. And for R3, R3 is minus 12. So to make it 0, I should have plus 12, plus 12. So now your elements become the earth. 1, 0, 0. This does not get affected because R2 is already 0. So if you do any operations, I just going to make R1 and R3 elements same. Here you get 0, 1, 0. And here you have R1 and R3 change. So R2 element remains same. R1, if I change, it becomes 2 minus 2 again. That also makes it 0. Here it becomes minus 13 plus 12. So that makes it minus 1 into A inverse is equal. If I see the elements for this, the middle row has the same element because we are not making any transformations in second row. First and third row, if I see with respect to 0, if you are doing that is going to keep your element same. So this will be 0 and 1 only. Here if I apply this, R1 is R1 minus 2 R2. So 0 minus 2 into minus 1 by 3. So minus 2 into minus 1 by 3 is plus 2 by 3. 0 plus 2 by 3. And this becomes 1 minus 2 into 2 by 3. So 1 minus 4 by 3, that is minus 1. Next. R3, if I talk about with respect to R2, it is R3 plus 12 R2. So 0 plus 12 into minus 1 by 3, so 0 minus 4, that is minus 4. And here you get minus 8 plus 12 into 2 by 3. So minus 8 plus 12 into 2 is 24, 24 by 3 is 8, minus 8 and plus 8 is 6. So once you get this also 0, 0, now we will do in the third column the last element also make this is 1. So if I try to make it 1, I can just do it by using the transformation as R3 changes to R3 into minus 1. So if I am just multiplying with minus 1 here, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. This becomes 1. This becomes Sorry, not 0. This becomes 1 only because they are not changing. 
a inverse here also if i keep the first and second elements or second row elements same here that remains same if i'm just changing this r3 elements with multiplying by minus 1 in the place of minus 1 or 0 now we have to use the last idea in this to make the other two elements 0 but this is already 0 now we just need to make this as 0 so we just need to do the row transformation in the second row and that has to be done with respect to the three. So if I'm doing that, I can write R2 as R2. So that gives you 100, 0.0. This makes it as an identity matrix. And once this becomes identity matrix, if I see what happens in the second row here, you have the first row same. 0, 3, minus 1, 2, 3. Minus 1, 4, 0. Second row, if I see it turns out R2 minus R3. So 0 minus minus 1, so 0 plus 1. This becomes minus 1 by 3 minus 4. So minus 1 by 3 and minus 4, if I try to solve it, that makes it minus 1 minus 1 by 3. So minus 13 by 3. And the last element, 2 by 3 minus 0, that is how it is. So you get these elements. Now once you get this, I understand this entirely becomes an identity matrix. So I into A inverse gives you A inverse. So you get the inverse of the matrix. So I, if I don't even write, that's fine. You directly get the inverse of the entire matrix. And that comes out to be 0 by 3 minus 1 by 3. 0 minus 13 by 3, so 1 minus 13 by 3 by 3 and minus 1 four. So you get these elements and this gives you the inverse of the matrix. So this is how you do the elementary row transformations, get the inverse of the matrix. Now once we get the inverse of the matrix, we have been asked to find values of x, y and z by solving these two linear equations. So once I write that linear equations which are implementing, 8x plus 4y plus 3z is equal to 19. Then I have been given 2x plus y plus z is equal to 5. And x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 6. So once I have these three linear equations written, I can just write that as 8, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2. Multiplied with the another matrix of x, y, and z. That gives me 19, 5, and 6. Now, if I just write that, I already have this AX equal to B. If I pre-multiply both sides by A inverse row, I get this A inverse into A is I, which is nothing but 1. So, you get X as A inverse B. So, you understand if you want to find the values of this X, Y, and Z, that is the value of the matrix X, Y, and Z. I can just write that x, y, and z as equal to a inverse into b, where b is 19, 5, and 7. And the a inverse, we already found out that was 0, 2, 5, 3, minus 1, by 3. Then you had 1 minus 13 by 3 and 2 by 3. So 1 minus 13 by 3. And the last had minus 1. You have minus one. Now, if I just solve this, I get this idea. Zero into nineteen that is zero. Two by three into five that is ten by three. Minus seven by three. Here, the second row, if I multiply it, one into nineteen, nineteen. Minus thirteen by three into five, so minus sixty-five by three. And two by three into seven, so plus fourteen by three. The last one you get minus 19 plus 20 minus. So if I solve this, I get those values of x, y, and z as. Zero plus 10 by 3 minus 7 by 3, that is 3 by 3. 3 by 3 is 1. Here you get 19 minus 
51 by 3, that is 19 minus 17, which is 2. And the last one you get is 20 minus 19. So from this, you get the values of x, y, and z. So x1, y, 2, z. So once I solve this linear equation with the help of matrices, I get this x as a inverse into b. And if I multiply that, I get the values of x, y, and z are 1, 2, 1. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions which deals with the finding of inverse of the matrix by using elementary row transformations. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And from now on, we are going to continue with our questions on 11, 10, 12, as well as JW mates. So stay tuned for more questions like this. Also do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Do share these videos with your friends also who are involved in the preparation of JWE means as well as the questions on the Thank you.